know what an IQ test is, people say that it means to check how smart you are. You answer a set of questions in logic, spatial thinking and languages to check your intelligence. The higher the result, the more intelligent you are. But does it mean that all the other people who fail to pass the test are just dull and stupid? <laughs> Dr. Howard Gardner, an American psychologist, decided that it was not fair to measure each and every person according to one scale as they were and still are so many talented and even brilliant artists, musicians and sportsmen around the world who simply just fail the test. You still have a chance. <laughs> so since then, he's also suggested other types of intelligence. Verbal linguistic, logical mathematical, musical, visual spatial, bodily kinesthetic, interpersonal, intrapersonal, naturalistic, there are still appearing new types of intelligence, but let's concentrate on the most common ones that we can find. People with, you know, this type of intelligence are typically good at reading, writing, telling stories, memorizing words and dates, but there's more to it than that. If you have a type of intelligence, you seem to operate in languages in, in any possible way from writing poems to learning 10 languages at the same time. People like journalists, speakers and trainers possess this type of intelligence. Can you add, deduct? Multiply and divide? Are you good at analyzing? Can you understand logical connections and reason your arguments? Congratulations! You are the owner of a logical mathematical intelligence. You can be a scientist, an engineer, financier, or even an accountant. Does that sound like fun to you? This one is a self-explanatory one I'm going to tell you now. If you are sensitive to sounds, rhythms, tones, and music, you are a 100% musically intelligent person. People of this type can sing, play musical instruments, and compose music in an amazing way. They have an ear for rhythm, pitch, meter, tone, melody, and timbre. It's amazing, isn't it? So close your eyes and imagine a pristine beach and yourself lying under the blazing sun. Done? Was it easy for you? Can you easily visualize things in your mind? People such in professions such as designers, architects, taxi drivers, astronauts, aeroplane pilots, race car drivers and stuntmen are the ones who possess this. Athletes, contractors, builders, police officers, soldiers, and actors use their bodies to a large extent because, so to say, the intelligence lies within their bodies. They can use and control their motions and sports, acting and dancing. So if you can juggle or squat well, go on and find yourself in that type of sphere. If you have a superpower of understanding other people's feelings, like say a psychiatrist or a teacher, you can boast to have the intrapersonal intelligence. It means that you can work well in a group as your characteristics are sensitive to other people's moods, feelings and temperaments, motivations and the ability to cooperate. Use it to your advantage and make the strong side work for you. During this mantra, you will breathe in on I am the universe. Do you? Tend to analyze yourself and your emotions and your feelings. Can you understand and predict your reactions and attitudes? If you can easily understand yourself, see your strengths and your weaknesses, and know how to upgrade them, you are an interpersonal intelligent person. Good for you. So this type was introduced later in 1995. It's fully about people who can tell not only a birch leaf from a maple leaf, but also notice minor differences. They know the names of every little creature on earth and might enjoy bird watching as their hobby. This intelligence was crucial in our evolutionary past as hunters, gatherers, and farmers. It is still vital for a botanist or a chef. That all is very interesting. But this theory is not so supported in the scientific world. Psychologists claim that there is no scientific research to prove the existence of this type of intelligence. Sorry. They tend to treat them more as abilities. For us, teachers and learners, it's not so important what to call this intelligence or abilities. It's more important how we can use them. Not every student is exactly the same. So watch your students to see which signs are strong and which signs are weak. 
This helps you to add a necessary twist to your lesson. For logical mathematical students, add schemes and charts. With bodily kinesthetic, use lots of movements and let them feel with their bodies. For visual spatial, we need a lot of pictures and vivid images. Musical students need grammatical chants, rhythmical patterns to progress better. Also, I have never met a person with only one side of intelligence, but there can be several strong sides to one person. That's why teachers should vary the tasks and touch on every part of the student's souls. Students will definitely benefit from these changes as lessons become more unpredictable with twists and turns. You can read more about this theory on our SkyTeach blog. Good luck and happy teaching. Bye for now.